How's it going guys, Kels Prime here and today I wanted to talk about the law in Anthem. If you want to be in with a chance of winning a digital copy of Anthem, click on the link in the description below. Simple as that. So on with the video. We have heard the term Legion of Dawn plastered everywhere and the name Helena Tarsis, but how does it all come together? How did we go from the Legion of Dawn 500 years ago and come to where we are now? What gave rise to the differing forms of the enemies, the gods who are referred to as shapers? Did they create the Anthem? What came first? What is the importance of the Heart of Rage? And who exactly is the Monitor? And is this Monitor the true threat or is there an even more underlying threat under all of this? I think it's time to delve into the lore that is Anthem and thanks to a Games Radar article which hosted both Ruzear and w Watamaniuk, I think I pronounced that correctly, we finally get some good stuff to delve into. I guess the best place to start is at the very beginning with the Legion of Dawn. Keep in mind these events unfolded around 500 years before you start the game and are the backbone to everything we do and have in Anthem. Once upon a time humanity was under the thumb of this very powerful group and this woman Helena Tarsis was able to gather everyone together under her banner and overthrow them. One of the chief tools that was developed at the time was the first ever javelin suit. Using a variety of innovations and techniques that they had at their disposal, a little secret underground lab work by the Arcanists, they were able to put together a suit that while maybe it didn't level the playing field, at least gave humanity a fighting chance against this group. And so, she sort of revered as this hero because she was able to gather everyone under her and able to overthrow this oppressive group that had been keeping humanity down and using humanity as tools. As a note, who or what these oppression factions are were not disclosed. However, it's interesting to know that humans were pretty much at the lowest point of the food chain. The Dominion, a faction, are also heirs to General Tarsis. General Tarsis' death was felt by many, and so much so that it was after General Tarsis died that the Legion of Dawn split. They split into what we have today, the three sub-factions the Freelancers, the Sentinels, and the Dominions. All three of these factions are human and all tied to the history of the Legion of Dawn, but we shouldn't assume they're the only examples of human society in Anthem's lore. It seems based on that assumption it's clear that we have a lot more to learn about General Tarsis and her ultimate impact for the future that gave birth to the Javelin technology, but to understand the state of affairs better, we need to understand and explore what is called the Anthem of Creation. The Anthem and the Shapers exist together. The Shapers are the deity that the humans refer to as gods. It's probably safe to say that the people of this world don't necessarily know which came first, which is the chicken and which is the egg. The unfinished world of Anthem was the Shapers trying to work with the Anthem of Creation and the Anthem will not be contained. It will not be shackled by the Shapers. The Shapers couldn't bend it to their will. Now whatever the creation of that situation was remains is lost to time. And what you see in front of us is the end result of their failed attempts at creating the utopia they once dreamed of. If the shapers who are revered as gods were unable to control or bend the will of the anthem of creation, it's clear that a power much higher than the shapers exists. However, the real question still remains, who created the anthem of creation? And with the vast power being shown by the Anthem, a scary thought is one that there is an even more powerful entity that created it. Who or what are they are the questions we will likely not learn about for some time, but still worth a thought. People see these gigantic machines strewn about the jungle and they know there's these underground tunnels, there's all these strange things and weird metallic objects. Sometimes they're half working, sometimes they're completely dead, and sometimes they come to life. And what the association is between these vast, incredibly dangerous machines and the Anthem, people are still trying to work that out. Is there a connection? What is that connection? And how do we try to survive in a world with these two giant forces? That's kind of what motivates the Dominion, one of the three factions created as the Legion of Dawn split. The ever struggle to understand and control. Your first mission has you starting out in what's called the Heart of Rage, a mission with which is pivotal in the history of the Anthem. It would seem at a site called the Heart of Rage, someone has been tampering with the Anthem of Creation in an effort to control it. 
most likely the Dominions. Much like the Shapers had attempted before them, but the Anthem has a will of its own and proves disastrous. Countless freelancers perish, the Anthem gives birth to a technological cataclysm which continues to eat the world around it and churn and become bigger. With the freelancers failing to prevent the inevitable at the heart of rage, it presented an opportunity for the story's apparent villain, a gifted Dominion commander who were once part of the Legion of Dawn who stood to protect mankind from all dangers, referred to as the Monitor. The Monitor feels that it has developed a way to control the Anthem of Creation, something even the Shapers were unable to do. If he's successful, the Dominion's expansionist empire will become unstoppable, and because of this, they're willing to do whatever to try and get even the slightest control of that particular force. It's important to note that the antagonist is one of any number of monitors who have developed some measure of affinity for the Anthem, but the capital M monitor of the game's story is a fearsome, one-of-a-kind individual. The monitor is comparable to a general or field marshal, he has troops under his command, he has resources, and what he does is sort of up to him. The average citizen of the Dominion is not in a position to tell the Monitor no. Other than this, not much is known at present about the Monitor. However, with what we have learned, he's probably given a task of some sort, like a military objective, and those troops come in a variety of forms. They've got your typical folks running around with guns, he's got special troops under his command, he has all these resources. What's dangerous about this particular monitor, however, is that when he has a task, he sets out to accomplish it in any way he can. It would seem there is no line he won't cross in order to achieve his set objective. Despite this all, the monitor is not in charge of the Dominion, and this clearly indicates that there is another, potentially larger threat holding his leash. If the monitor is willing to cross the line, what does this mean for the one controlling him? More questions, yet no answers. The final part I wanted to touch on is how this all comes together and may actually lead into the first DLC coming in March. Out in the wilds of Bastion, there are more immediate concerns than the Dominion. Shaper Tech and all its progeny are an ever-present job hazard for freelancers exploring the open world. This, after all, is at the forefront of everything they do. There are creatures that exist in the natural world, which evolved to live on Anthem's alien planet. And then there are those that have been violently mutated by the Anthem. We have elemental beings and we have Chimera. The Ash Titan, for example, is an elemental. It's born out of the Cataclysm. But something like the Fire Scorpions or the Ice Wolves, those are Chimera. Those are animals that exist in the world of Anthem, like the Grabbits, but have been altered by a Shaper event. They have evolved. The insect-like Scar are something else entirely. They are a product of this world. On the surface, they are a relentless... On the surface, they are relentless scavengers. They will come in like locusts and swoop everything up and turn it into their own hives and tunnels. They are not particularly understandable from a human point of view. Of course, they are not human and their motivations as to why they do what they do, past making more of themselves, is a big unknown to this day. They operate more as a hive mind than a hierarchy. What's clear, however, is that they act with a purpose. They can have plans, they're not animals by any means in terms of intelligence. Because of this, they're a threat. They are very difficult to deal with, and more importantly, when you step on one scar, there's going to be another 10 more pop up to take its place. So it's not a case of defeating one and being done with it. They seem to multiply quicker than you can actually handle them. So as you see, whether you look at the history of Anthem in regard to the Legion of Dawn, the Anthem of Creation, or even the evolving creatures, it's clear everything is intertwined, with the root of everything boiling down to the Anthem of Creation. Act 1 is called Echoes of Reality, with Update 1 being called Evolving Worlds. It's clear that Anthem of Creation will play a great role in all this, and the enemies and factions, be it the Scorpions, Scars, new threats will come about. The Anthem of Creation is a powerful force that will not only change and evolve what we see today in the open world, but also create the new and evolving enemies we will come to encounter in the future. It's pretty interesting that they have gone this route, 
it really does mean the possibilities are endless when it comes to the direction they go. For all we know, the scars could ultimately become so self-aware that eventually the greater objectives like power struggles and domination could enter the frame. Anything is possible as the Anthem continues to evolve and change the shape of everything within the world of Anthem. Of course there's a lot of ifs and speculation here as to what may or may not happen and those were my thoughts and my portrays of what Rutsei Art and Wataniyuki delivered in the Games Radar article. What we will see in my opinion with the evolving worlds is a form of shape of rift, a form of mini cataclysm that's going to turn up, it's going to change the way certain enemies will be, it will reveal and introduce new enemies. I'm also told that Bioware deliberately held back on creatures and enemies and stuff like this that would be in the open world that wasn't shown to anyone in the demo or the EA game changes because of the fear that it would be leaked and if you ask me that's quite genius they knew it would have happened they want to leave a lot for your surprise and I believe with the evolving worlds first DLC first update I think we're going to see a lot of new creatures roaming around in the world of Anthem and hopefully these will actually add an even more deeper layer to what's going on maybe they'll be integral part to the story maybe they'll inevitably be related to what's coming in the third chapter which is the cataclysm well i hope you enjoyed this video and if you have made it this far a like would be appreciated subscribe for more anthem content and don't forget to share thank you very much for watching and until the next video I'm a legend. I'm a legend. I'm a legend.